Hi, hope you guys are all doing great. In this video, we'll discuss various mechanical properties which we come across in dental materials. We'll go through those terms. We'll try to simplify it as much as possible along with various illustrations for your convenience and benefit. I hope you guys are all ready. So let's go ahead. Brittleness. So what exactly is brittleness? It's relative inability of a material to deform plastically before it fractures. Just observe this video for your convenience and clarity regarding brittleness. As you can see, I'm trying to break this particular chip using some amount of force, right, which I can apply with my fingers. So as you can see, there is no plastic deformation whatsoever and the material is fracturing, right? So these kind of materials, we consider them to be brittle. And the best example which I can give you in dental perspective, dental material perspective is amalgam, which you're all very much familiar with. So brittleness describes the property of material that fractures when subjected to stress, but has little tendency to deform before rupture, as you can see in this particular illustration. And most importantly, consider this very, very important, brittle materials are characterized by little deformation, poor capacity to resist impact, high compressive strength and low tensile strength. The same is the case with amalgam, isn't it? Now moving on to the next property, hardness. So hardness is the ability of a material to resist deformation. If you observe this illustration, on to your right you have stone and on to the left we have this dough material. So among this, it's obvious that the stone is more harder comparatively. So how are you judging this? How are you coming to this conclusion? It's based on the material's ability to resist deformation. As you can see, uh, there are clear cut indentations on this dough material when force is applied with finger isn't it so hardness is the ability of a material to resist deformation which is determined by standard test where the surface resistance to indentation is measured and we discussed this elaborately in previous videos which are available in e-classes as well as in youtube and for your information brinell hardness and rockwell hardness are the two most referenced hardness test methods that are available and we give an arbitrary number and higher the number the harder the material. Now coming to ductility. So what exactly is ductility? It's the ability of a material to elongate plastically under tensile stress. Observe this illustration, it will be much more clear for you. So we have a safety pin onto your right and a dow material onto your left, which is made into a ball-like structure. So when you're trying to, you know, uh, deform the safety pin using tensile stress, right uh, you can see there is no deformation whatsoever but on the other hand observe the dough material you are able to deform it plastically right uh, that is you can draw them in the form of wires as clearly evident in this particular illustration so the relative ability of a material to elongate plastically under a tensile stress and this property of ductility is reported quantitatively as percentage elongation it's a clear-cut indication that a material is soft or malleable, isn't it? Now coming to next property, malleability. So what exactly is malleability? It's the ability of a material to be compressed into thin sheets without fracture. Just observe this illustration. So on to the right side, you have stone again. On the left side, you have your down material. And when you're trying to apply force, on stone or on the dough material, you can clearly see that the dough material is malleable. That is, you're able to form a sheet, right? Using some amount of force. So malleability describes the property of a metal's ability to be distorted below compression. It's a physical property of metals by which they can be hammered, shaped and rolled into very thin sheet without rupturing. And for your information, the malleability of gold is considered to be the highest of all the metals. And please remember that we are using dow material here just for illustration purpose. But in reality, we're talking about malleability or ductility uh, with respect to metals. Now coming to stress, the basic definition, it's the amount of force acting per unit area within the material which is subjected to stress or pressure. Observe this illustration. So using a finger pressure, we are trying to create 
an indentation or a deformation rather we can say in this particular material and you can clearly see that there is some kind of resistance or counter force that is happening within this dow material so the force per unit area within a structure subjected to a force of pressure is called a stress and stress in simple terms is nothing but internal resistance or counter force of a material to the distorting effects of an external force or load as you can clearly see so there can be stress even without application of external load which is quite interesting and this is called as residual stress forces that are applied perpendicular to the cross section are considered as normal stresses whereas forces that are applied parallel to the cross section of a given material are considered as shear stresses now coming to a strain so what exactly is strain it's a deformation in response to stress so observe this illustration where you can clearly see that upon application of force or stress you can clearly see deformation in the material that is nothing but strain in simple terms so strain is a change in dimension per unit initial dimension so it's a deformation of material from stress and it's a simply a ratio of a change in length to the original length and deformations that are applied perpendicular to cross section are normal strains while deformations applied parallel to cross sections are shear strains now moving on elastic strain so what is this all about amount of deformation that can be instantaneously recovered upon removal of the external applied force or stress as you can see in this particular illustration so we are actually trying to deform the material using some amount of force uh, via fingers and you can see uh, upon removal of this force there is instantaneous uh, recovery isn't it so that's what elastic strain is all about amount of deformation no matter what the quantity of deformation is that which can be recovered instantaneously when an externally applied force or pressure is reduced or eliminated now moving on to the next property plastic strain so what is plastic strain it's irreversible deformation that remains even after removal of external applied force or stress so if you observe this illustration on your right we are again demonstrating elastic strain where the deformation is recovered instantaneously but uh, when it comes to plastic strain as you can clearly see the moment we are applying force right uh, once there is plastic deformation then the material remains in that orientation so irreversible deformation that remains when the externally applied force is either reduced or eliminated resiliency what is resiliency it's the ability of material to deform elastically observe this illustration so when we are applying force on this particular material it is absorbing energy when it is deformed elastically and then upon unloading or release of force you can see the recovery as well so that's resilience in simple terms so technically speaking it's the amount of elastic energy per unit volume that is sustained on loading and released upon unloading of a test specimen finally coming to strength so what exactly is strength all about is this the kind of strength we're talking about maybe yes so when it comes to materials observe the illustration strength is nothing but the amount of stress that is necessary to cause specified amount of plastic deformation that is yield strength or the amount of stress that is required to cause fracture of material which is called as ultimate strength so that's how we describe the term strength when it comes to materials or in a materials aspect so these are some of the terms related to mechanical properties which i wanted to highlight in this particular video and you can find some multiple choice questions related to this topic in the description part of the video do solve them and post your answers in the comment section for review and analysis from our side as well so wish you all the best love you all and for any further queries or assistance feel free to get back through mail 24 by 7 take care